noon starts right now. We start with a traffic alert in Bernie. We've been tracking this for, su for several hours now, according to a Facebook post by the Bernie Police Department. There was a major crash on I-10 between North Main Street and Johns Road. That crash involves two drivers. It's not clear if there were any injuries, but as you can see, traffic is still going slow in the area. At last check, only one lane was open. This noon, a lot of folks in the community are seeing clear skies. However, yesterday, a different story. There was some nasty weather that rolled through. Right now, people outside of Kingsbury are cleaning up the damage from that possible tornado that tore right through that area. Sarah Costa walks us through the efforts underway right now. Now that the sun is up, a lot of the damage we are seeing consists of scattered debris like this tin roof. You can see in this tree and another one behind it. And this came from about a thousand feet away, a barn across the way that has that roof completely ripped off. This is on Appling Road, which runs in between 10 and 90. But the cleanup went through the night as crews worked in the dark to help get some of these residents out of the dark, restoring the power and downed power lines. We found this home off of 90 east of Kingsbury where you can see several pieces of ripped off metal from a roof or a shed in front of this resident's home. Here's another example of the damage. We found two more barns with roof damage. This one missing half of its roof. The other one had its entire roof ripped off. The Office of Emergency Management coordinator says they don't believe anyone was hurt by the storms. For anyone else with damage from the storm, the Texas Division of Emergency Management is asking you to report it. Now, the National Weather Service, they'll be out here assessing that damage in the next couple of days. They have a lot to go through, especially in the Austin area. From Kingsbury, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. The Luling area saw damage as well. One home's roof now completely gone. There's also down power lines, debris, snap trees near Stairtown. The one driver and one driver got caught up in some low wires. They were drooping across State Highway 80. The National Weather Service will spend the next few days surveying the damage and determining the strength of those tornadoes. Meantime, right now outside with live cam, stunning day. You'd never know we had that kind of action in the weather department. It's true, and uh, a large portion of the area yesterday didn't see any rain at all. It was all east of 281 as we thought it might be, and the, as you just saw, there was uh, some severe weather there and a tornado, we believe, based on the damage that we saw while we were out storm chasing that tornado. There, as you guys just mentioned, between Guadalupe County, right on the Guadalupe County, Caldwell County line between Kingsbury and Luling. And that was one of the homes that we saw likely taking on some tornado damage there. But as we zoom out some, it was not just in our area. As you know, Austin, Round Rock got hit very hard with tornadoes yesterday. Several of those, Giddings, Coldwell, up to College Station, some reports of tornadoes and that even stretched up towards the Crockett area. You can kind of see the corridor here where there was tornadic activity. Also a report of a tornado in North Texas that may have caused the fatality. So it was just a very busy day yesterday. 81 reports, 19 hail reports, 42 wind reports. And all of that is now moved out, thankfully. However, the southeast is now under the gun today, the southeastern portion of the country where there is expected to be more severe weather. In the wake of this system, very gusty winds, gusts to 32 right now here in San Antonio, gusting close to 40 in Del Rio, gusting to 38 in Eagle Pass. Very strong northwest Julie winds behind this system, and that's prompting more red flag warnings. I feel like we've seen these every day now. It's just been so dry, especially west of San Antonio. Fire danger will be there. That goes from 1 p.m. until 7 p.m. Temperature wise, 50s and 60s, it's a little chilly out there, especially with those winds. Again, 63 at the airport, but 50s in the hill country and temperatures will only make it into the low 70s today and then falling back down into the 60s by 7, 8 o'clock. Notice winds die down a little bit as we get into tonight and we fall into the 50s and eventually 40s by tomorrow morning. One thing we did see, some dirt on the cars, some dirt coming down with some of these storms. We'll explain that why you may need a car wash this week. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a bit, guys. Just a lot of dirt and a lot of hail for some folks. A lot of folks submitted photos on KSAT.com with the hail they had in their area. You can take a look at those photos as well as other images captured by our viewers during last night's storms, and you can submit your own. 
And our meteorologists weren't the only ones on the air on the ground yesterday. They were also provided the latest information on KSAT Weather Authority app. You can scan the QR code on your screen. Go to KSAT.com and that's where you'll be able to find the app. You can also go to the App Store or Google Play. In other news this news, San Antonio police say a gunman had definite plans to kill. They say he fired at another man nearly a dozen times at a West Side apartment complex, hitting him in the head and in the body. It happened on a street called Micklejohn Walk. That's near Hamilton Avenue. And as Katrina Weber reports, the victim somehow survived. Before the sun even rose, the Lincoln courts were wide awake. Police and people who live here met up in the middle, all trying to find out more about a shooting. Police say someone took aim at a 29 year old man around six this morning and did not miss. He was hit repeatedly, both in his head and body. Officers were responding to several 911 calls when they found him on the ground bleeding in the 400 block of Micklejohn Walk. Police say the victim was sitting at the bottom of the stairwell here when he was shot. They say he doesn't live here and they're not sure why someone would want to come here and shoot him. That and many other questions had investigators searching for answers. Witnesses told them the shooter walked up and fired at the victim from a distance about eight or nine times, then moved in close and shot again. That shooter became the subject of a police search after he ran away. The victim was taken to a hospital with wounds that threatened to take his life. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. We now know the identity of a man hit and killed while crossing the street on the city's east side. He is 56 year old Ansel Mitchell. According to police, Mitchell was walking near North Walters and Dignity Avenue Friday evening. And that's when he was hit. Mitchell was taken to the hospital, but later died from his injuries. A driver was arrested for warrants. Medical examiner's office has ruled this death an accident. 35 years after a woman was killed, the suspect now charged in her death will stand trial. Opening arguments in the capital murder trial are set to begin this afternoon. Larry Moore was always a suspect in the 1987 murder of 25 year old Deanna Lowry, but there was not enough evidence to charge him. In 2018, the cold case was reopened and Moore was eventually arrested and charged. The trial had to be rescheduled several times because of the pandemic, but a jury is finally ready to begin. If found guilty, Moore could be sentenced to life in prison. And new at noon, an update on the mask mandate at SAISD. The district says masks will now only be encouraged. The change came last night during a school board meeting. SAISD board of trustees decided to lift the mask requirement. Instead, opted to encourage people to wear their masks. The district says the change takes effect today. SAISD says the decision came as the district sees a lower COVID-19 positivity rate. Ukrainian forces said they retook a strategically important suburb of Kyiv overnight. This comes as Russian forces squeezed another area near the capital and continue to attack Maripol. ABC's James Longman has more. Russia may have demanded surrender from Mariupol, but this morning Ukrainian forces there are clinging on. These satellite images show smoke pouring over that besieged city. Residents have been taking shelter in underground shelters, freezing condition, food and water increasingly scarce. Uh, President Zelensky had another powerful address last night and he spoke directly to people there. He said, never think even for a moment that Ukraine does not remember you. There have been 27 days of this war and the bravery of the Ukrainian people continues. Take a look in the occupied city of Kherson locals took to the streets to protest the Russian advance. But these shocking images show Russian forces firing into the crowd. At least one person there is understood to have been injured. The staggering human toll of this war is just worsening by the day. According to the United Nations, over 10 million people have now been forced from their homes. That is nearly a quarter of the entire population. President Biden has been warning about the use of chemical weapons by Russia, but also another threat from them, cyber attacks, and says they could be directed at the United States. James Longman, ABC News in Lviv, Ukraine. After winning in San Francisco, the Spurs taking their time getting to Portland, but they'll be ready for the Blazers coming up. Students in our area creating fashionable looks for a good cause, and the designs are Fiesta inspired. We'll take a look after the break. Fiesta fashion for a good cause. Fiesta kicks off next week and leading up to the fun festivities, Stevens High School students are creating fashion designs to help Goodwill San Antonio. And as Max Massey shows us, this fashion show will help Northside students and families all around our community. This class has helped me 
not only with like school wise, but it's also helped me like with my confidence in like whatever fashion has to do with. Jessica Ruiz is one of the Stevens High School students, not only working on her future in fashion, but also working to help out Goodwill San Antonio. We are celebrating our partnership with Stevens High School and the Entrepreneurship and Fashion Program with a Fiesta Sustainable Fashion Show. The rehearsals are complete, the students are ready, and the show is set. So we're going to have 20 students from Stevens High School who are going to be modeling looks that they've curated and created from gently used items that have been donated to Goodwill. So and after their show, those looks are going to be put up for sales immediately following. So folks can purchase those Fiesta looks, get ready for next week if you're interested in checking out the fiesta sustainable fashion show you can join in on the fun tomorrow evening at the goodwill on petranco 6 to 8 p.m 90 cents of every dollar spent at a goodwill san antonio store gets reinvested here in our local community now we know unemployment's been a, a big talk the last couple of years a lot of families going through a lot of hard times how has the goodwill helped out and how will this program help out well, sure. Again, from employment opportunities and workforce development programs, we are helping San Antonians who may have lost a job during the pandemic gain those employment opportunities or also gain skills that they may not have had otherwise as industries and just our employment landscape has changed over the years. As for students like Jessica and her classmates in the entrepreneurship and fashion program at Stevens, they are ready to show off their creations and help families across the Alamo City. Fashions never look so good. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Awesome program. Outside with live cam. So yesterday, you either got hit really hard or got nothing. Not at the, I like. guess the airport kind of had some skimpy results as well. We needed more rain than this. We do. You're right about that. Parts of San Antonio didn't get anything at all. We, we did get some storms overnight that helped a little bit for those uh, across the eastern half of Bear County. But it was, it was kind of an all or nothing event, unfortunately, when it comes to rainfall. The aquifer is still falling. It's down 5 tenths of a foot to 655.8. We hardly got any rain over the recharge zone. And as we look at the pollen count, Ah, uh, that mold's not there, but it's not. Uh, oak has jumped up to moderate category, 140. Ash, juniper, hackberry, all there. We'll look at the forecast, which is a dry one, coming up. You get rain at your house? Got a little bit of rain at, at our house. Little little thunder, little lightning, little rain. Same here. But just little. Little. Nothing. I you know. At home about. I want to see some some greenery in the city of San Antonio and some Ooh. flowers blooming. I think we all do. Yeah, it's it's not been great the last couple of months when it comes to rainfall. And you know, we just got just enough here in town to where car wash is going to be really busy next couple of days. <laughs> Does your car look like this? Yep. Uh, yeah, there was a, a muddy rain yesterday. Here's why. Uh, we had some dust coming in from Mexico. It got fed up into this storm system here. And then we had the uh, storms put down the rain, obviously. Took down some of that dust with it. And the end result is that. You got those spots all over your car. So yeah, the car wash is going to be a busy spot next couple of days. Sarah Spivey, meteorologist Sarah Spivey, wrote a great article on this on KSAT.com. Gives all the uh, explanations as to why this happened. Check it out, ksat.com. Here's a look at the 24-hour rainfall totals. And you guys mentioned, yeah, it was kind of all or nothing, right? So you go west of San Antonio, not even a drop. Uh, the western half of San Antonio, not much at all. As you got uh, east of downtown, east of the airport, then you start to run into some rain. Places like Cibolo, Shirts, they did get some decent rain. Uh, with some of these thunderstorms, obviously it came with some hail too, some severe weather. And then uh, you can kind of see the track there of some of these storms where you got into some of the heavier rain. Estimates of close to four inches there just west of Bastrop. And most of the eastern half of our viewing area did pretty well when it came to rain. Anywhere from one to three inches of rain with some isolated spots that were higher than that. Here's a look at the time lapse this morning. Now, uh, obviously the storm system has moved out. We still have maybe a little bit of haze in the atmosphere, but uh, 63 degrees at the airport. West northwesterly winds at about 18, dew point is at 37 and falling. And we've got those gusty winds really starting to kick in here. So if we're going to be out and about today, nobody's going to be one of those kind of blustery days. Winds are going to gust 30, 35 in some cases. And we've even seen a few gusts up close to 40 as you get out towards Del Rio and Eagle Pass. It's windy all over. And the winds combined with the dry air, 
We sound like a broken record here, but uh, fire threat is there. It will continue to be there as long as this air is as dry as it is and as long as we continue to see these gusty winds. Uh, the wind gust forecast shows the winds really not dying down all that much. I think they'll come down some tonight, but they pick right back up tomorrow. So we're going to put together several windy days here, I think. As far as cloud cover goes, we're clear here in San Antonio. I do want to show you there are some clouds trying to work in to northern parts of the hill country. I think these probably put on the brakes. Don't make it to San Antonio. We should continue to see sunny skies. And this is on the back side of our storm system, which is still roaring here off to the east. We've got tornado watch boxes, places like New Orleans, parts of Mississippi will be under the gun today just as high of a risk of severe weather as we had here in Texas yesterday. So this is one of those classic spring systems. And on the back side of it, you've got some cooler air working on with the cold front here. So temperatures in the 60s now will probably only get up to about 70 degrees or so today. So a cooler day as well. Here's a look at the forecast. 70 by 3 p.m. will go 72 by 4 p.m. But then temperatures fall off quickly tonight into the 50s. Notice those winds start to come down some. 5 to 10 miles per hour overnight, but they pick right back up tomorrow. 71 on your Wednesday, windy. 41 to start your Thursday, and windy again. So you can imagine there will be some fire risk there Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Then the numbers really start to ramp up. We're back in the mid-80s by Saturday and Sunday. It's almost hot, uh, with maybe some more cloud cover by Sunday and Monday. And as we look down the line, maybe, maybe some rain chances next week. But this is very typical of a La Nina pattern, guys. Pretty dry, and then what storm systems we do get, do get tend to produce some severe weather. And that's uh, kind of sticking with the theme of La Nina this year, guys. Thank you, Justin. Yep. Hey, the Cowboys have lost another offensive lineman. We've got that for you coming up. And quarterbacks in the NFL moving all over the place these days. First went Golden State Sunday. They beat them. Then they stayed in San Francisco Sunday night and yesterday. They got into a little practice and then they head over to Portland today to get ready to take on the Trailblazers, a team they are trying to keep behind them in the race for the 10th spot in the West. Now, they have 10 games left in the regular season, three against the Blazers tomorrow night in Portland and then back-to-back -back games at the beginning of April at home. That's three games in 10 days against the same team. Spurs are coming off a win over the Warriors Sunday night without Steph Curry to open up their four-game road trip. They are out of town because the NCAA Tournament Sweet 16 will be in town this weekend at the AT&T Center. He's been great for us since he got here, um, and, and tonight was his night. And, you know, we just kept looking for him and kept looking for him. And uh, he had some big shots. And, um, I mean, I'm happy for him. I'm glad that, you know, he, he's in shots and he's out there healthy and being able to go to war with us every night. Keldon talking about Josh Richardson, the number seven on your program, and he has contributed a lot so far since he has been here. All right, so it's the Spurs and the Trailblazers tomorrow night, 9 o'clock at the Moda Center. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Not really a shock since the Cowboys decided they didn't need the guy anymore, but the Dallas Cowboys have lost another offensive lineman. Lael Collins signed with the Cincinnati Bengals. He agreed to a three-year contract worth up to $30 million. The Bengals, who are coming off their first Super Bowl appearance in 33 years, are signing Collins to help protect quarterback Joe Burrow, who was sacked seven times in a 23-20 loss to the Rams. And that's after the Cowboys released Collins to save $10 million against the salary cap. Connor Williams is also out after signing a two fourteen million dollar deal with Miami. The Cowboys have been able to re-sign safety J. Ron Curse to a two year ten million dollar contract. That's according to the new NFL Network. Curse just completed his first season in Dallas. He had a career high 15 starts with a total of 101 tackles, 10 passes defended, nine tackles for a loss and two interceptions. All those are career highs. The 28 year old started his career with the four seasons in Minnesota and then a single year in Detroit before the Cowboys got him. After 14 seasons, quarterback Matt Ryan is leaving the Atlanta Falcons. That's going to be weird. He's moving to Indianapolis to play for the Colts. The two teams worked out a trade deal. The Falcons get a third round pick this year. At the same time, the Falcons signed Marcus Mariota to a two year contract worth 19 million. The Colts needed a quarterback after they traded Carson Wentz to the Washington Commanders for two third round picks this year and next year. See, a lot of guys moving all over the place. Speaking of moving, the 100th anniversary of the Valero Texas Open just received a commitment from two recently named Ryder Cup captains. So the PGA Tour will be moving here pretty soon. Heinrich Stenson and Zach Johnson is going to be playing in the tournament scheduled for March 31st 
through the 3rd of April, a week before the Masters at the JW Marriott Resort and TPC course. Earlier this month, Johnson and two-time Valero Texas Open champion in 2008, again in 2009, was named the U.S. Ryder Cup team captain. And Stenson, who will be making his second Valero Texas Open appearance after he was appointed captain for the European team. So there you go. Big names coming to San Antonio for golf. Love that. Me too. New today at five. By now, you're probably familiar with home COVID tests, but there are many other at-home medical tests for everything from hormones to HIV. But before you start swabbing, 12 on your side's Marilyn Mords tells us which tests are reliable. That's today at five after entertainment tonight. Millions of people in the U.S. are about to endure stormy weather if they haven't gotten it already. Meanwhile, here in Texas, the work begins. Communities are only just beginning to survey the damage that was left behind by yesterday's nasty weather. ABC's Marcus Moore has more in the aftermath in Round Rock, just north of Austin. Destructive tornadoes tore across the region and damaged homes and businesses, including this bank building just behind me here. You can see the drive through awning was torn away. Look at all of the twisted metal there, a destroyed pickup truck still in the parking lot. And when you look around, there's even more devastation. Large pieces of wood and also bricks left littering the parking lot. These are the types of things that were flying through the air when these tornadoes moved through Round Rock here and other areas across the region. And we have seen astonishing videos uh, from people who were caught in the middle of these storms. Get inside, get inside! Really breathtaking. Uh, and we know that there were tornadoes reported not only here in the Austin area, but also in Dallas-Fort Worth. Uh, the town of Jacksboro getting a direct hit from a destructive storm there. A high school was severely damaged, as well as homes and businesses there uh, sustaining damage as well. And parts of Oklahoma seeing this destructive weather. These storms moving across swiftly and really leaving people shaken, but there were only relatively minor injuries reported uh, across the region, and people are saying that that is a miracle. And throughout the day today, crews will be surveying the damage to see just how bad it is, but there are a number of families who have lost their homes. Marcus Moore, ABC News, Round Rock, Texas. Outside with live cam, pretty calm today, but you know, it's gonna be interesting to see when the National Weather Service gets out and looks at all this damage, what uh, categories that these uh, right. possible tornadoes fall into? Because a lot of this is just, it's unconfirmed sightings until they make that designation, correct? That's true, although I can tell you, based on what we saw yesterday, just based on what we saw on the radar, that was tornado damage there around Kingsbury. But yeah, that's what they go out and do. They go out and look at the damage, and based on what they see, what kind of damage, for instance, if you have a fence post through a tree, you know the winds were very, very strong. And that's how they determine the strength of these tornadoes, whether it be an EF1, EF2, and that's what they'll be out doing today. The folks there at the National Weather Service will be very busy doing those surveys. I want to show you the big picture here, and it shows you this storm system that uh, Marcus was just talking about. You can see the, uh, the, the distance that it covers. A lot of real estate here, and now there's a uh, new tornado watch box where places like uh, Mississippi now under the gun, where they're going to see more severe weather, and more severe storms today. It's pushing well east of us. On the backside, we've got gusty winds, some cloud cover trying to move in, but we'll still likely see lots of sun. Here's a look at a picture we got in on our KSAC Connect. And by the way, thank you so much for all the pictures we received. It really does help to get uh, some images, knowing what is going on out there. This picture is from Seguin. And around midnight, it began to rain hard, uh, hailed somewhat or somewhere around 2 a.m. And it says this is the most rain we've seen in a while. The rain was welcome. Severe weather, not so much. But you can see there close to about two inches of rain in Seguin. And as we look at the 24-hour rainfall totals, there really was a, a cutoff here. So you get to the airport, which only picked up a hundredth of an inch, and you go west, hardly anything at all, maybe a few sprinkles. You go east of that, there was a corridor of some pretty nice rain across southeastern portions of Bear County, Elmendorf over to Palo Alto College, up to Schertz, Cibolo and New Braunfels, and then of course out towards Seguin and Kingsbury. Some good, good rain. Uh, winds, as we mentioned on the backside of the system, still going pretty strong this morning. Gusting to 32 here in town, gusting close to 40 in Del Rio. And the forecast for today keeps those winds in place through the afternoon. Temperatures make it up to about 72 or so. Then we fall back down into the 60s by this evening, 68 at 7 o'clock. Still breezy. Those winds calm some tonight, but they'll be right back with us again tomorrow, guys.
It's been a windy winter and spring yeah. so far. Yeah. Thank you, Justin. Today, Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson, President Biden's first Supreme Court nomination and the first black woman considered for the high court, faces hours of questioning from both sides of the aisle. Senate Judiciary Committee Republicans vowing to raise concerns over Judge Jackson's judicial philosophy, her record and issues of race, and how they might influence her decisions on the court if she's confirmed. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest from Washington. Breaking barriers, Judge Katanji Brown Jackson, the nation's first black woman nominated to serve on the Supreme Court in 233 years. Now Judge Jackson facing 30 minutes of questioning from each senator on the Judiciary Committee. If all the time is used, Jackson is looking at 11 hours in one day, roughly eight more tomorrow. Republicans vow to scrutinize her record, with ranking member Chuck Grassley questioning her interpretation of the Constitution. Do the First Amendment free speech protections apply equally to conservative and liberal protesters? Yes, Senator. Senator John Cornyn pressing Jackson on her role as a public defender, representing Guantanamo Bay detainees. And Senator Josh Hawley accusing Jackson of issuing lenient sentences to defendants possessing child pornography. To which Judge Jackson had the chance to respond today, calling those cases sickening and the accusations false. As a mother and a judge who has had to deal with these cases, I was thinking that nothing could be further from the truth. Although day two and three may be the most polarizing part of the confirmation of the hearings, no one doubts the 51-year-old mother of two's judicial jury. qualifications. No one questions either your academic law school credentials or your service as clerk and as federal judge. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says he remains confident the Senate will confirm Judge Jackson by early April. Her confirmation won't need any Republican votes. M. Wynn, ABC News, Capitol Hill. Low-income households who missed the deadline for this year's Affordable Care Act coverage can still sign up for plans with free premiums. That's because of a special enrollment period being offered at healthcare.gov. Americans with incomes under $19,320 or just under $40,000 for a family of four are eligible. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services says most can get plans without premiums, while others may see a minimal cost. The Biden administration has recently been increasing efforts to get more people enrolled by adding funds to programs that assist with the selection process. Starting next month, Pfizer will be supplying 4 million courses of pack. Paxlovid, pardon me, to UNICEF. And that is a COVID-19 antiviral pill. That medicine's gonna go to people in 95 low and middle income countries, which covers 53% of the world's population. Lower income countries will pay a not-for-profit price. Countries with higher incomes will pay according to a tiered pricing arrangement. The announcement comes just days after a statement by the medicine's patent pool that 35 companies will begin producing inexpensive generic versions of Paxlovid to increase access for treatment. A popular food delivery app is dealing with a lawsuit. A major U.S. city, the company is deceiving, says a company is deceiving customers and overcharging them. How that app is responding still ahead. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar News. Fed Chair Jerome Powell is saying inflation too high at the moment. It is jeopardizing what has otherwise been a strong post-COVID economic recovery. Now, Powell promises the Fed will take, quote, necessary steps to address inflation going forward. Still, markets didn't react well to his comments, all ending the day down following that speech. This comes just a week after the Fed raised interest rates for the first time in three years. Meanwhile, meta platforms, Facebook and Instagram have now been banned in Russia. That by a Moscow court, all deemed as extremist activity. The Russian court accusing the tech giant of refusing to comply with government requests to remove what they claim is fake news. 
The ruling is part of a broad strategy by Russian authorities to suppress and control information about Russian military actions in Ukraine. And SpaceX is set to launch their first orbital flight for its Starship rocket this coming May. SpaceX has been developing the next generation reusable Starship rocket. This will be able to carry cargo and passengers into space. Elon Musk made the announcement yesterday. The California company will still need an FAA license to blast off, something regulators say they're reviewing. And that's Cheddar News Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. Pfizer voluntarily recalling its blood pressure drug Acuretic because there's too much of a particular impurity called nitrosamines. They are common in water and food like cured and grilled meats, dairy and vegetables, but they could increase the risk of cancer if you're exposed to too much for too long. There haven't been any reports of anything happening to people who've taken this medication, but Pfizer is recalling it just in case. That includes the brand name and two generics. You can find more details on Pfizer's website. Washington, D.C. is suing Grubhub, accusing the delivery service of deceptive actions and hitting customers with some hidden fees. The attorney general there says the company was charging those hidden fees into adding them into the tax line on your receipt at checkout. He also says the food delivery service misled customers by listing restaurants on its site without their consent, as well as creating non-official phone numbers and websites for restaurants. That instead sent visitors over to Grubhub. The lawsuit also alleges the company's promotions misled the customers and harmed the struggling restaurants in the city. Grubhub pushed back against those claims that it broke DC law, but in its response, it said in part, quote, Many of the practices at issue have been discontinued, end quote. Outside with live cam, we get one day of wild weather. We're going to be talking about that a while, but now we're just kind of back to where we were before. We are, and that's concerning because it has been so, so dry. We get these gusty winds and then the, the, the fire threat, the grass fire threat is really just starting to take off here. 63 degrees, the high so far today. It's going to be below average. So our average is 75. We'll be below that mark, I think, this afternoon. 58 was the low this morning. Records are 96 and 29. Goes to show you we still can see freezes this time of year. That was set back in 1915. We've got a look ahead to what we can expect this week when it warms up, too, because it's pretty chilly out there right now. We've got that forecast coming up. Still waiting for lots of answers about last night in some parts of South Texas. Yeah, a lot of damage, a lot of places. And National Weather Service is going to get out and tell us how strong those tornadoes actually were. Huh? And you look at some of the video, you, you know these are going to be some fairly strong tornadoes, especially those ones up around Austin, just, just looking at some of the damage. But they'll go and evaluate that, and we'll get, uh, we'll get some of those answers in the coming days. In the meantime, a lot of pickup going on where that uh, severe weather struck. Thankfully, here in San Antonio, we did not see much severe weather. We did get some hail last night, but nothing like what they saw to our north and northeast. I want to show you the big picture here, guys. This is the storm system that was behind all of that active weather yesterday. It is now pushing east and producing quite a bit of severe weather as we speak across parts of Louisiana and Mississippi. That line racing east now. There are tornado watch boxes out ahead of it in anticipation that we're going to see quite a bit of severe weather today. So places like Jackson down to New Orleans, Baton Rouge. This is where we could see some big storms here over the next couple of hours as that line progresses east. Widespread severe. So this is the same uh, kind of risk that we had yesterday across parts of East Texas and it's it's a pretty significant risk and it stretches again from Baton Rouge north of New Orleans over to Mobile and that threat will continue to push east later today. So that is uh, that is an area there in Mississippi that will likely see a lot of what we were dealing with yesterday. Now I want to take you back into Texas here and actually back into New Mexico. Look at the back side of this storm system producing snow and some of the higher elevations there. Good for the ski resorts, I suppose, but it does show you that there's some cold air on the back side of the system, a classic spring system. And now we'll zoom in on Amarillo. That is not cloud cover. That is actually snowfall that fell yesterday. So yesterday we had snow in the panhandle. We had severe weather across central Texas and then some very warm temperatures across deep south Texas. Truly is a spring setup. And when you get the cold air and that warm air to clash, that uh, that is what can happen. We go outside for you here in San Antonio in the wake of that storm system. Lots of blue skies and 
Nice weather, albeit a little bit windy today. 63 degrees at the airport, 67 Stinson, 64 Kelly, 62 right now at Randolph. And you see the winds out of the west northwest at about 18 miles per hour at the airport and gusting higher than that. We've got gusts close to 32 now in San Antonio, gusting at 32 in Kerrville and Hondo. And these winds probably won't let up much today. So if you're going to be out and about, just know yeah, it's going to be gusty. High profile vehicles may uh, cause some uh, issues on the roads if you're driving. It may kind of push you around a little bit. Red flag warnings are in effect for our western counties. These areas highlighted in pink, and that's because not only are we seeing gusty winds, but the air still very dry, and these are places that did not get any rain out of yesterday's storm system, and uh, it's just not looking great when it comes to the drought situation there. Wind gust forecast, I mentioned the winds stay up through much of the afternoon. I do think they die down some tonight. That will allow temperatures to fall some, but then the winds will pick back up again tomorrow. Temperatures at this hour, we are seeing some 70s, Katua to Beeville. There is some cooler air trying to work in from the northwest. It's 58 Kerrville, 56 in Fredericksburg, a little closer to home here. 57 Bernie Stage, 63 Bulverde, 63 right now in New Braunfels. And uh, looking at 62 down there at Randolph, as we said earlier. The forecast calls for 70s, yes, this afternoon, but I want to show you what happens by tomorrow morning. We're down to 40 here in San Antonio. I don't think we see temperatures get down to freezing in the hill country, but there could be a few places that get close. So just a heads up there, 38 Bandera, 39 Kerrville, and it may even be a couple of degrees colder than that. It will be a chilly start to your Wednesday. Here's the extended forecast. 71 tomorrow, mostly sunny and windy. 76 Thursday, 83 though by Friday. Temperatures really start to jump up by the end of the work week. And then by the weekend, we're back in the mid 50s and those morning lows moderate some as well. But yes, very, very spring like uh, just looking at what we were uh, dealing with yesterday, guys. Thank you, Justin. Hollywood's biggest night set to feature a lot of firsts with the Oscar Awards show has in store for film fans. That's still ahead. The 94th Annual Academy Awards show will be airing right here on KSAT 12, Sunday, March 27th, and this one is expected to be one for the history books, from the host to the nominees. This year's got a lot of firsts. ABC's Rena Roy breaks down what we can expect to see and who is making history. It's expected to be one for the record books, the 94th Academy Awards filled with firsts. Director Kenneth Branagh becoming the only person nominated for seven awards in seven different categories throughout his career. We went across the water to wouldn't understand the way we talk. This year for his film Belfast, up for Best Picture and Best Original Screenplay. To end up, you know, on the, in the boulevards of Hollywood, actually you know going to the academy awards is it's pretty surreal and trippy and uh, and beautiful and it, it it reminds you that the movies always always did allow people to dream big and continuing to inspire big dreams actor and academy award winner denzel washington breaking his own record once again earning his 10th nomination making him the most nominated black actor in history how many black creatives do we have that step into a director's chair and are also acting this the same year, you know, we don't get a lot of that. He is really setting the tone and an example for that next generation. Filmmaker Steven Spielberg still going strong. The first to be nominated once a decade for the last six decades, this time around for his remake of West Side Story, which is now the first movie remake to ever be nominated and the first to be nominated for Best Picture twice. Spielberg has been a force in Hollywood, arguably the most famous director in all of cinema. He's one of the few that you can go to any consumer Joe Schmo that hardly watches movies. You could say Steven Spielberg, Spielberg and they'll know who you're talking about. The animated documentary Flea is the first film to score nominations across three separate feature film categories, documentary, animated feature, and international film. It's the story of a refugee telling his story, which is illustrated via animation, and it's really powerful, which is why it got nominations in those three categories. Also, the talk of the town, hosts Wanda Sykes, Amy Schumer, and Regina Hall, three women hosting the award show for the first time ever. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. We've got some famous hosts, 
Yeah. Best they lives, right? Mike and Fiona could do it. Yeah. I wonder if we could host the Oscars next year. Oh, Let's put our name in know, there. We're still waiting for Hollywood to come calling. <laughs> Although, you know, it'd be really nice is to have some nice, soft music while you're trying I mean, to listen sleep. to that. I love it when we class up the show. I know, exactly. <laughs> Pamela Martinez from Overnight Sounds, a sonic slumber party is here. The beautiful harp. Yes. Tell folks about the harp. Well, the harp is a lot like a piano, but it's basically playing all the white keys until you add your feet in, and then it changes into black keys. Wow. Seven foot pedals that you Golly. have to do it and maneuver while you're doing that. So that well, we've got hard. some beautiful music, and we're going to tell you about that. So what, speaking of music, what music relaxes you? This is pretty good right here, so let us know at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter, and you may see your answer in the show. All right, it is National Crafting Month, so we're going to make sure you get crafty. And speaking of crafty, there is a great event coming up here for Fiesta, and Regina Sanders is here from Southwest School of Art. Tell and us about it. It's the Southwest School of Art Fiesta Arts Fair. It's going to be wonderful. So I'm all gonna, ages, right? Like ages five all and up? Ages yeah. five and My up. Kids. I have something for everything. They do. My kids used to love it. We're going to tell you all about that. And speaking of loving it, how about a little bit of this is not your ordinary salsa. Mm -hmm. No, but it's actually somebody's grandma's salsa recipe. Yes, yeah, so we introduce you to a local company and get a taste of this salsita. All that and more when SA Live continues in just a few minutes. That's hot. Ooh, you need a chaser. Welcome back. 65 degrees. Sunny skies here in San Antonio. We're up to 72 later today. Breezy winds. That'll be the big story. Gusty winds. Windy uh, conditions uh, with red fly warnings out to the west. Still windy next couple days. Temperatures stay right there in the 70s. It does warm up by the weekend, but this is a quiet forecast. We need some rain. Not there in the seven day, guys. Oh, very quiet. Thanks so much. And thank you for watching the news at noon with us. I don't want to give anybody any ideas or anything, but that harp music is really good napping music. <laughs> Maybe Work day's not over yet. <laughs> it's like, whoops, sorry. But there is some good salsa and chips right there. That'll keep That'll you awake. That'll keep for you a while. awake. <laughs> SA Live starts right now. Today on SA Live, it is the end of winter and a great time to blossom onward with National Crafting Month. We share some crafting ideas from Amy Lata. Plus, we are getting saucy and pairing a local salsita company's products with food. And the Southwest School of Art has Fiesta events coming up, and we get a little art lesson ourselves. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. our first guest today. You can be serenaded by that music for an entire night. A little night music, if you will. Okay. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mike Ostridge. And I'm Fiona Gorstiza. Happy Tuesday. All right. Joining us to talk about Overnight Sounds, a sonic slumber party for contemporary art uh, for Contemporary Art Month is Pamela Martinez, founder of Teletextile. Good Ooh, afternoon. Hello, thank you for having me. That is just such yeah. a beautiful, I mean, do people just, just stand there in awe and listen to you play? I'm still in awe of it, really. I love it too. And for those who missed it earlier, kind of describe the harp. Um, well, the inside of a piano is actually called a harp, so they have a lot of similarities, but when I play the harp, it's like playing the white keys of the piano, but there are a pedal for every letter or every sound, and you change it to add or subtract the black keys. So yeah. if you watch a harpist, look at their feet. Okay, that's, <laughs> that's what we where happening. <laughs> yeah. the hands. By the way, this is uh, Andrew Bergman. He's going to be playing bass here in just a little bit, standing outside, and of course we're going to have uh, Marcella Leal dancing. But back to the harp, and then the, mm -hmm. the large, uh, the sound area lying mm -hmm. against your shoulder, that's where it comes from, right? Yeah, the, the, uh, the human is the kickstand for the harp, so it just kind of like floats around. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and there's how many different sizes of harps? There are many. I couldn't name the number, but this is a concert harp. There's a, an even bigger one. Most of them just get smaller and smaller. So like folk harps, like Celtic harps or mariachi harps. There's all kinds of harps. All right, so let's talk about the idea behind this event coming up. Yeah. Um, well, it's Overnight Sound is um, an all-night sonic slumber party. It's 12-plus hours of sound. There's 20-plus musicians. 
and it's to build community and to build rest around sound. I lead sound baths, which are sound meditation. So this is kind of an extension of that idea. And sometimes I call those a concert with your eyes closed. So it's really about listening and slowing down to music. And just, again, relaxing, right? Yeah. <laughs> and relax with a little bit of dance. And here with a performance again is Andrew Bergman on bass. Marcella Leal is going to be dancing. And Pamela Martinez. Take it away. Martinez, Andrew Bergman, and Marcella Leal, thank you so very thank much. You. Yes, for more information on Overnight Sounds, a sonic slumber party for Contemporary Art Month, and just head to our website, essaylive.com, and click on the As Seen on Essay Live tab, or just snap that QR code on your screen. Well, after listening to that, I mean, it is, I mean, just kind of relaxed. Yeah, it like was. <laughs> Music soothes the savage beast, right? Yes. So, and it's a great way to maybe get ready for bedtime, right? So, the question is... What's your favorite music? To relax, you know, just what helps you wind down? What is your, what is yours? I think something with like drums. I don't know no, why. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Classical. Well, yeah. I mean, and, and then also now I think that harp just moved to the, yeah. to the top of the list, but going to work in the morning at, mm -hmm. you know, before the sun, everything. So that classic. Is that what channel, you so. do? Yeah. yeah. You, to relax movie. before work? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> After that, I'll turn the blood pressure down. Yes. <laughs> All right. So let us know. Tag us at SA Live KSAP on Facebook and Twitter. And you may see your answer a little later in the show. Okay. It is National Crafting Month, and we are helping you get crafty. Yes. We get three easy DIY ideas from author Amy Lutta from Amy Lutta Creations. I'm Amy from Amy Latta Creations, and March is National Crafting Month. It's one of my favorite things to do, so I thought that you might like to see some simple, easy DIY craft ideas that you can do by yourself and with your family this month. For 
First of all, one of the best things we can do is create things to share and give away. Nothing says that we're thinking about someone quite as much as a handmade card. And these washi tape cards are the easiest thing that I can teach you how to make. All you need is cardstock, washi tape, which is a decorative tape you can find in your local craft store or online, and a little bit of creativity. You're gonna cut your cardstock any size that you want your card to be, fold it in half, and then you're gonna add stripes of the decorative tape. You'll notice that when I add these stripes of tape that I don't do it perfectly straight. I do it on a bit of a diagonal so I don't have to worry about getting things perfect. Then you're just gonna tuck or trim the ends of the tape. You can also add a little heart or flower cardstock accent, add a button, add a little bit of glitter, as many stripes and colors as you like, and then you can write your message on the inside and give your card away. Another fun crafting project that you can do is create these mini masterpiece magnets that you can use on your refrigerator. All you'll need is a glass cab, a little magnet, and either some Bristol board and markers or pretty pattern scrapbook paper. If you're a doodler like I am, you can doodle and draw anything that you want. You can do, I did a little rainbow here. I have some shamrocks for St. Patrick's Day, a flower, a bunny for Easter. You could do a monogram, anything you like, or cut a one inch circle of pattern scrapbook paper that you like the look of. Then you don't even have to worry about your art. Next, you're gonna take some clear liquid glue, apply it to the back of the glass. I spread it around with my finger because messy crafts are the best, right? And then we're just going to apply this on the back, add a little bit more glue, and voila, we have a pretty personalized magnet. The third project I wanna share with you also uses some pattern scrapbook paper. This is a 3D egg. And all you need to create this is scrapbook paper in whatever colors and patterns you like. You're going to cut six identical egg shapes and fold them in half. Next, you're going to start adhering them together, just gluing one folded egg on top of the other, like an accordion. Then you'll open it up, you'll add a hanger, and attach the two sides together, and you have this fun, festive 3D egg. You can make a whole bunch of these and string them together like a garland on your mantle, or you can hang them anywhere in your house, even on a tree, to celebrate spring. As you get into National Crafting Month and you're looking for more creative ideas, of course, don't forget to visit me at amylattacreations.com where I'm sharing all kinds of seasonal and holiday projects. And I'd love for you to check out my brand new creativity journal. It's called Practice Makes Progress, my creative journal. And it's based on 25 different quotes about creativity. Each one has a little reflection and then there are prompts for you to do both on and off the page, encouraging you to create in whatever ways you love best. Woodworking, writing poetry, sculpting, sewing, painting, crafting with paper, anything that you love to do. So discover, explore, and embrace your creativity with me by grabbing a copy of Practice Makes Progress everywhere books are sold. Happy National Crafting Month from Amy Latta Creations. Little is. things like See? that. She said woodworking. I know. Yeah. I know. Okay. For more information on Amy Lotta, just head to our website, salive.com. Click on the As Seen on SA Live tab or just snap that QR code right there on your screen. Mm -hmm. All right. Later on the show, Fiona and I are becoming art majors. What? Yep. Southwest <laughs> School of Art shows us what the featured activity is going to be for the young artists and garden during Fiesta. What? Things are going to get spicy. We do a taste test with a local entrepreneur, Salsita. Thank <laughs> you.